you did something unprecedented. You come in at the source, you're working there for how long? So I get there January 2000. Um, I left in March of 2005. So I was there for five years. Okay. I'm really asking how long before you got in the big seat? Editor-in-chief. Editor-in-chief. About two and a half, two years. Incredible, Kim. Two and a half years. Incredible. This is somebody who was at the Muse, working at the Muse five right. years prior. Yep. Dreaming of one day working at the source. Mm -hmm. You get in at the source, you bust your butt, mm -hmm. and within two years of being there, editor in chief. Yep, two and a half, yeah. Incredible. Yep. And it was, you know, remember, it was a tumultuous time at the source, right? Like the source had just gotten um, new investors, remember? Like there was that whole, you know, this is at the time when the internet was really starting to come up. Mm -hmm. And so the source poured a lot of money into the internet and it didn't do well, right? Because everyone was trying. Everyone was trying to figure it out and no one really knew what that formula was uh, for success in the, on the internet. Um, and I remember uh, when Black Enterprise uh, put like all of this money into the source and it was a huge deal, the investment at the time. And it was a big time for the source magazine. There had never been um, a woman in the editor in chief role. Now there You're were the first and only editor in chief at the source. Am I correct? No, no. I was the first woman to take that post, editor in chief. Has there ever been a woman since then? Yes, there was a woman a few years ago. Uh, boss lady Simone. I don't know. Okay. If you know so she, you know, um, but this is more recent, right? Like this is in the new regime because the mm -hmm. source has this whole new regime um, under Londell. So that Londell McMillan. Right. That happened a lot later, but this is the. You know, this is the prime time. We're talking yep. the prime time of the source. I can get in my bag a little bit, right? We're talking, you know, the Dave and Ray days, you know, the big controversial days and the highest selling um, magazine at the time, right? Like this is when the source really dominated in the culture. And so to have that job was a lot of pressure, um, but I think really, you know, it's something that after, you know, my path and everything that I've been through, I've become comfortable with years later, right? Like even when I walk on set today and I see my cast and I've been in reality TV for, I don't know, what, eight, seven years now, damn near. They say, this came from the source. It's like a joke, right? Because that stamp is on me for life. You know, Kim, I got a, I, I got a question for you. You get the editor-in-chief position at The Source after being there two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to wear the crown. Right. But heavy is the crown. Mm -hmm. When you got that position, looking back, were you ready for it? Um, I was never ready for anything that I've ever dealt with in my life. So what does that mean exactly? I, was, I wasn't ready for any kid that I had. <laughs> <laughs> Never ready. You're never ready. Everyone tells me when they have uh, when they're having kids, they're like, I don't think I'm ready for a baby. I'm like, nobody's ever ready. OK, I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for the job at the source. Any anything that I do in life, I'm never fully ready for it. Right. Because you can always prepare more. Um, and I feel like when I got that job, I wasn't ready. But who's to say the next person was was ready as well. Right. It's just it's a learning experience. And in most positions, you really learn as you're doing them. Um, so I wasn't I wasn't trained to to do that job. Like I that's why I'm asking. Like that, that's trained. literally why I'm asking. Look, I'll tell you how it happened. Carlito resigned, right? Um, there were things going on behind the scenes, and no one knew who was going to get the job. So there was a lot of 
a lot of shadiness going on, right? Like then now certain people think somebody else is going to get the job. So they're being friends with them. You know, like people are hating on you. There's all this type of stuff happening, right? And before anyone knew anything, Benzino comes in my office. And now this was like three weeks or so before it was even announced. And he shuts the door and he's like, you're going you're gonna to get the job. I'm going to make you the, the next editor-in-chief. And I was, I was just looking at him like, is this a secret? Don't tell nobody yet. I just want you to know that. So whatever you want to do, just know you know you got, we behind you. And walked out. <laughs> this is how you knew you were getting the job. That's how I knew, right? But I don't, you know, and nothing is ever guaranteed. So I'm kind of like, wow, that was, that was promising. But for the next couple of weeks, I had to navigate in the office with this information, knowing this, but yet not being able to own it or to tell anybody. So it's very tough for me because you're working with people and you want to make a decision, right? Like, well, I think this is the best thing or, you know, this is what we should do. And people are like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And you're like in your head thinking, well, really, he told me I got the job, right? But as we all know, when you get into certain positions, any position, it really, you know, it depends on where you are, but you can't always look at this hierarchy structure, right? You have to learn how to work with people on your level, with people under you, how to make people under you work for you, how to carry that stuff out. So that was the biggest learning experience there because I had to figure out how to politically maneuver people that didn't know I was about to get the job. And I ended up getting the job. And then I found out, I mean, this is a little behind the scenes source stuff. I found out that there was a petition for someone else to get the job. And um, a lot of people had signed, because they knew I was up for it. So a lot of people had signed this petition for someone else to get the job. Oh, wow. It hurt my feelings. Wow. <laughs> was, why are people, so, you know, it hurt my feelings. And I think that it wasn't personal towards me, but it was really their support of someone else. Um, but as you know, the story goes, in that time and in that regime, you know, you can't boss down the bosses and what they want. So probably the worst thing you can do for someone else is try to um, put something to, especially, you know, the history of petitions and things at the source, letters at the source. This isn't new. Correct. I think that that was more damaging. Doing that was more damaging um, to just the staff environment than just kind of sitting and waiting to see what decision was going to be made. But the source was someplace, let me just say this, it's always been that place where everyone has always felt like no one owns, you know what I'm saying? No matter who's in charge, it belongs to us. People have always felt like the source belongs to us. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.